Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. Today's date is May 15th, 2013. And in addition to all the news that we're going to cover and an exclusive interview, my little friend in here is going to meet his doom. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and this is the InfoWars Nightly News. Thank you for joining us, and here's a look at some of our top stories. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, Eric Holder points out his deputy as the subpoena man. Then, a House bill calls for an IRS hiring freeze. And President Obama's firm belief in press freedom. All that and a UN-style buffet coming up on the InfoWars Nightly News. Yeah, yeah. InfoWars.com. <laughs> so we've got quite a show in store, including the demise of my new little friend here, uh, all in the effort of the UN and to save global hunger. But first, our top story. House bill calls for hi IRS hiring freeze. This is from Kurt Nemo, written today. And uh, the bill is aimed at preventing the feds from using the IRS to implement Obamacare. And this might have a chance to get through. The act may be cited as the Prevent IRS Overreach Act, prohibiting the IRS from hiring new employees to enforce Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, which is also known as Obamacare. With recent events related to the Internal Revenue Service, I feel it's necessary that both Congress and the Department of Health and Human Services look closely at the money given to the IRS through the health care law. And there you go. And the good thing about this IRS scandal, one, it provides us ammunition to go after the IRS. Common citizens, it's going to be a grounds for, you know, plenty of grounds for people to go out there and sue the IRS. These groups that have been targeted, you really do have a right to go out there and take it to them now. I mean, what, what are you going to do, wait for them to investigate you again? They've already done it. You know, all they're doing, and notice they will never go after media matters. Media matters will never get asked anything about this because, you know, they're a 501c3 but they're with the regime. And when you're with the regime, eh, you don't have to do much. You know, you just basically get to go say whatever you want. You get to target whoever you want. And you're always right. So there's that uh, article from Kurt Nemo. Moving on. More with this IRS scandal. Bipartisan congressional demand. Provide all communications between IRS and White House about targeting conservatives. And they warn, don't destroy, modify, or remove any documents. And this is Representative Sander Levin from Michigan, who's a Democrat, and Dave Camp, who's a Republican from Michigan. So at least we got these two guys working together. But, you know, we'll wait and see if anything really comes out of it. And demanding that the Internal Revenue Service answer by next Tuesday 13 questions posed by the committee relating to IRS discrimination against conservative and pro-Israel groups where relevant, provide all internal agency documents and communications sub substantiating the answers. The committee also warns the IRS not to destroy, modify, or remove any records. And this is what they write. In compliance with this request, you shall produce all responsive records that are in your possession, custody, or control, the committee instructed the IRS. Records responsive to the request shall not be destroyed, modified, removed, transferred, or likewise made inaccessible to the committee. And specifically, Levin and Camp asked, did the IRS at any time notify the White House of targeting conservative or other groups? And they want to provide all documents of communication between the IRS and the White House in this matter. So this is a potential to even show a cover-up on that if they've already been destroying documents, removing them, uh, changing them in any way from this committee. So now we're starting to see a congressional committee develop over this IRS scandal. So we got three scandals at this point that are current with the Obama administration. We have Benghazi, which happened just last year, September 11th, even though they want to say, oh, it was long ago. We should forget about it. We should forget about putting hits out on ambassadors, you know, using security firms that we hire. Uh, second one, this IRS deal, which is where they went after targeting Tea Party groups, conservative groups, people teaching the Constitution, anybody not in line with the socialist values of the Obama regime. And the third is this Justice Department scandal, which we'll get to in a couple stories, about them wiretapping press's phones in order to conduct investigations. And we'll get to that right now. And this is from the Mail Online. Eric Holder points finger at his deputy who secretly obtained journalist phone records as Obama is forced to say he has confidence in Attorney General. Justice Department obtained records listing incoming and outgoing calls and duration of calls for more than 20 telephone lines used by journalists. Lines include the main number used by reporters in the House of Reps press gallery and general AP numbers in Washington and New York. 
Attorney General Eric Holder has recused himself from the investigation into the leak to avoid the appearance of conflict of interest. And so what Holder said, he says, this is a very, very serious leak. And what he was talking about is the reason they were going after these records is because there was some supposed Al-Qaeda leak about a bomb plot that the press got, and they want to know who's whistleblowing in the administration. And so by going after whistleblowers and by going after the press, they really have declared a war on the First Amendment, even though they said they were going to be one of the most transparent regimes in history, which we have proved that they're as transparent as a black sheet of glass. Um, there's a whole lot in this Mail Online article. So here, uh, Jay Carney, the press secretary, said the president has confidence in the attorney general. So he's confident that the attorney general, who's now saying he didn't know who was involved with this, it was one of his, you know, deputies, just like Fast and Furious. You notice how they never know what's going on in their administration. They only know what the press is saying, though, in these certain instances, but they don't know who's doing it, and they don't know how it happened, and we don't know... You know, it was rogue uh, agents in the IRS who, who were investigating people. It wasn't a policy developed by the White House. And, and, it, was, and it was a terrorist, uh, you know, it was a protest that blew out of proportion in Benghazi. It wasn't a calculated terrorist hit on the ambassador to cover up the fact that we were giving missiles to al-Qaeda to then take, or actually giving them to Turkey, and they could give them to al-Qaeda, which then transferred them to Syria. Basically, you know, al-Qaeda now has surface terror missiles to take down passenger jets at at any time they want to. But hey, Obama and the White House on the AP probe says, says political, Obama firm believer in press freedom. And this is once again, Jay Carney, the, uh, you know, I guess the resident mouthpiece of Sauron. On the issue of what is a Department of Justice investigation, as I understand it, the president is a strong defender of the First Amendment, Carney said in his daily briefing, commenting on the news that the Justice Department conducted surveillance on some associated press communications. The president is also a firm believer in the need for the press to be unfettered in its ability to conduct investigative reporting and to facilitate a free flow of information. Big but. Obama also recognizes the need for the Justice Department to investigate alleged criminal activity without undue influence. And what's the criminal activity? Well, it's whistleblowing. It's people blowing the whistle in the administration. They're calling that criminal activity. Anytime somebody speaks out and goes away from the, the social herd of this Obama administration, they're going to be treated like criminals. See what they're doing to Bradley Manning. So there's Jay Carney. It won't be long before he succumbs to the stress of constantly lying to people every day on national television. And like what we said in Benghazi, it's finally coming out in Fox News. The headline on Mediaite, Geraldo on major deception in Benghazi was Mitt Romney told by CIA's David Petraeus to back off. And this is uh, basically a video clip from Fox and Friends where Geraldo he basically says, look, this is to cover up an arms deal where Ambassador Stevens was brokering um, these surface-to-air missiles to the Turks who were going to give them to the Syrian rebels. And we're finally seeing this hit the mainstream news. It's not about he said, she said, how long did they know, did they call off an attack? This is a cover-up. This is a hit on a man to cover up because he was the witness to the deal. He was the broker. And so they were, they were basically killing off their loose end. Well, let's go to this um, London Telegraph article from September 5th, 2011, and see how it relates, and then we're going to play the Geraldo clip. Libya, Al-Qaeda acquires weapons. There it is. Al-Qaeda's North African branch has acquired a stockpile of weapons in Libya, including surface-to-air missiles that are threatening air travel, says EU's counterterrorism coordinator, and the coordinator is Gilles de Kirchhoff. Due to the turmoil in Libya, members of Al-Qaeda and the Islamic Maghreb have gained access to weapons, either small arms or machine guns or certain surface-to-air missiles, which are extremely dangerous because they pose a risk to flights over the territory. And now we don't know where these missiles have gone. We don't know who's got them. They're probably in Syria now, but they could go anywhere. Once this stuff hits the black market, you know, it's, it's ripe cannon fodder for false flags because anytime there's going to be a missile attack, they're going to blame it on Al-Qaeda. And we're going to have to search everything in the world to catch these al qaeda rebels who we actually gave the missiles to. So let's go to that clip from Geraldo Rivera. 
Was he briefed by David Petraeus and the CIA to suggest that there was a secret mission going on there, that we can't go there, we can't talk about it? I believe, and my sources tell me, they were there to round up those shoulder-fired yes. surface-to-air missiles. They were going to hand those missiles over to the Turks, and the Turks were going to give them to the rebels in Syria. Right. It was like a Iran-Contra. Yep. I think that it, it, it merits gigantic investigation. It will all, all right. become clear. And this was the same Geraldo who back during the uh, Afghanistan war did exposés from Fox talking about how the troops were guarding the poppy fields. So kudos to him for actually getting it out there and getting the word out. It's about time, mainstream media, you're about six months behind. We were reporting on this, I think September 19th was when we first um, reported on this about the missiles. So there you go. Let's go to our daily quote now. 1913, this is from Ron Paul wasn't a very good year. 1913 gave us the income tax, the 16th Amendment, and the IRS. And let me tell you, it's about time that we get rid of the IRS. Let's get rid of them before they turn 100 years old in this country. we got one more story. And, uh, and then it's going to be it for my little friend over here. Because this story has to do with the food we eat what we put in our mouths and where it comes from. That's right. The UN now says, why not eat more insects? Yeah, that's right. The Food and Agriculture Organization on Monday held the likes of grasshoppers, ants, and other members of the insect world as an underutilized food for people, livestock, and pets. A 200-page report released at a news conference at the UN's agency in in Rome says two billion people worldwide already supplement their diets with insects which are high in protein minerals and have environmental benefits so why not give that to the Western world well you know they're gonna lower our standard of living so in a few years we are gonna be wandering the fields looking for grasshoppers and crickets and beetles and anything to get that nutritional um, sustenance that we desire and it, it's an inherent desire uh, my dad's been to China several times and he has always made this observation I don't see any stray cats. I don't see any squirrels in the trees. I don't see any birds flying around the city. In fact, I rarely even see bugs, he told me, because let me tell you, the people in China eat everything because their food is controlled by the government. And when you have government control, you always have starvation, you always have uh, scarcity of resources, and you always have the elites being able to circumvent any type of process and they always get theirs. But it's not over. I saw this article on Monday, and it, it reminded me of a couple other articles. Here's one that just came out May 13th, $325,000 burger. How did Mark Post grow a burger in a test tube? And this is from iScience Times, $325,000 burger. How did Mark Post grow a burger in a test tube? To create the in vitro burger, Post took stem cells from the necks of cows and injected them with fetal calf serum. This resulted in 20,000 strips of cultured muscle tissue using tens of billions of cells that were combined to form the burger. Mm -mm 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 -mm. What will they think of next? Well, they already thought about it. Because if you go back just a couple years ago, scientist makes poop burger. That headline was making the rounds. Please try not to vomit as you watch the video below, and here's hoping that this is not the answer to the world's hunger problems. Japanese scientist Mitsuyuki Ikeda has been busy playing Dr. Frankenstein. He's developed a burger made from protein extracted from human feces. Yep, that's right, poop. So the poop burger, it's 63% protein, 25% carbohydrates, 3% lipids, 9% minerals, all in one turd burger. We're going to go to a quick clip of that, and you could uh, see how they talk about the artificial meat that they make. And then, and then we will be back, and my little friend here, my little friend here is going to, well, he's going to visit that big grasshopper in the sky. So let's go to that video. Sewage mud is rich in protein because it is alive with bacteria. These bacteria are harmless because they are killed by heat during the manufacturing process. The red color is obtained by using food coloring. 
The artificial steak, according to initial tests, even tastes like beef. In fact, to refine the flavor, Professor Ikeda adds soy protein. A little guy, I don't know if I can do this or not. I've been, been out here in the, under the lights all show been looking at you. I've been thinking about this. I went and caught you, caught my own food. But, uh, you know, I guess it is for the earth, and the U.N. says it's right. And um, what, here to help me out with this is uh, Alex Jones. Alex, do you think I should do this? I've thought about this, and the United Nations is right. They said that we should start eating our own poop. Yeah. And that we should start eating insects because it's good for the earth. The elite need dozens of aircraft, uh, huge palaces, yachts for themselves, while Prince Charles and others lecture us that we shouldn't take showers or hot baths. They travel around with their own chefs, you know, they do whatever they, they want. Well, I mean, I, I think we should sacrifice our standard of living so they can live like kings. And I agree with Mayor Bloomberg, uh, they should raise taxes to where all of us have to live in 200 square foot tiny uh, coffin apartments. And I just think this is the wave of the future, to dehumanize us fully. I agree with the Journal of Bioethics. We should kill children up to age three for the earth. Uh, I agree with Dr. Eric Pianca that 90% of the public should be killed with a bioweapon, uh, airborne Ebola. And, but I mean, just to, just to get us used to that, though, we should start by eating insects. And, and, and I, though it's a small one, it's it a token. A one. It's a token, and then we should challenge Prince Charles and the rest of them. Well, I thought that there are gods. Actually, actually, th they should get all the filet mignon, right? And then you know, they should get all the nice organic stuff, as they do. You know, they tell us to eat GMO, but they all stay away from it. Exactly. Monsanto won't have yep. it in their cafeterias, right? Right. But GMO. Yet, yeah. We have to eat bugs, and who knows? I mean, pretty soon it'll be the bugs don't grow fast enough. We have to have genetically modified bugs that grow even faster. Well, they're actually releasing genetically modified mosquitoes in the U.S. Right, right. That contain vaccines, all forced vaccines, but only because. Bill Gates says there's too many of us, and he cares about us. Right. Yeah, Look, secret meetings on islands. Bill Gates. Bill Gates says you should eat bugs, okay? Because, I mean, you know he's not going to eat bugs, but he is kind of like our father, like Chris Rock said about Obama. So we need to do what he says. The U.N. and Bill Gates, they say eat bugs. They say eat poop burgers. Uh, so, uh, Rob, what do you say? I, I don't know if I could do it, but it, the U.N. says I should do it, right? Prove yourself. Dehumanize yourself right now. Here we Do go. it for Janet Napolitano. Do it for Janet. Do it for her. Do it for him. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, delicious ambrosia. Look, the eh, U.N. knows eh. best. The U.N. knows best. Come eh. on. Look at him struggling. Eh. But the eh. U.N. actually, this is a little bit inhumane, though, right now. It's okay to torture kids, you know, for the government, but not, don't, don't hurt a bug. I'm going to call animal cruelty. Yeah. Yeah. Delicious. How's it mm. taste? I think I'll order another. So see, the UN's right. They're right. High five, yeah. man. You did it for the UN. Wow. Hey, because Ted Turner says you shouldn't be able to have more than one kid, but he has five and more than 20 aircraft and palaces. Hey, you did that to save food for, for Ted Turner. Okay, I just swallowed it. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm ready for, for the factor. UN. The UN, don't oh, yeah. live long and don't prosper. Nanu, nanu. So the elite can run your life. Don't live long and prosper. Well, that's the first part of our show. We'll be back with David Knight interviewing another victim of this IRS scandal that's just now starting to hit. You notice how they released the news on Friday, so it has some time to deaden before it comes back. No, over dude, the he weekend. was raptured. They need to know college students' reading list and their thoughts. Oh, yeah. That's the IRS's job. Exactly. Next, you're going to say we shouldn't get monthly censuses demanding we answer questions. Listen, the UN's going to say what type of light bulbs, what type of toilet you have, and, and we're going to put smart meters on your house and track you. And, of course, they've been spying on us without warrants. That's yep. freedom. My God, are you starting to... Do you need to be sent in for... It's starting to get green, actually. Do you need to be sent in for psychological evaluation? Why? Because I don't think we should be eating bugs? No, no, no. Now people that get SWAT teamed at the wrong house, yeah. they now go and grab them for psychological evaluation right. if they don't like it. Yeah. Maybe I should be. Maybe I am an extremist. I don't think we should be eating poo burgers and insects. Wait a minute. Earlier you agreed that you saluted the U.N., and now you're going back on your promise. Yeah, because I just tasted it, and I don't really like what they're serving. I think that's what it is. After, you know, it's like... But they said under Plantopolis, 
you're going to get meat once a year. They're going to take it out in your life, but right, they're all exempt. Yeah. But they're all exempt. I mean, yeah. that, that's a great system. Well, it is if you're an elitist. But I guess if you're one of the people who actually work and support the system, you know. While they suppress all the new technologies that would have already taken us to the stars. Right. But see, they're supposed to get rid of us so that they can go do that. See, they, they it's the have, ultimate in selfishness. Yeah. Totally ridiculous. All right, we're going to be back after this short break. Uh, we're going to play a quick trailer as well to an upcoming interview that's going to air next week, um, probably first on the Alex Jones radio show, and it's an interview. Hey, let's talk about Mike that. Judge. Let's get okay. serious yeah. about that. Yeah. And, and, and forget the whole UN thing for a moment. Okay. Is Mike Judge not cool? Very cool. Great, uh, really cool living room. It looks like he jams out there a lot with, uh, he's got a piano. Well, he used to play professionally yeah. I mean, with Jimmy Vaughn and people. Right, yeah, he started off as a bass player. and um, Well, before that, he was a rocket scientist. Right. I don't well, F-18. Yeah. And then, and then uh, you know, just he got into animation kind of as a whim when, in his mid-20s. And, you know, look, look and, at that. And he, he always, he told us, he, so he told me the other day when we were out, he said, I always just kind of do these cynical joke interviews with the press because I'm going to give you a real interview. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's pretty good. I, mean, it's a, I think it's a great interview. Th this nearly is groundbreaking. An nearly an hour in length. Ground, uh, really? What, longer yeah. than I thought? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, at first he said, we'll go 30 minutes, but 30 minutes crept by. And then and I was, said, hey, you want to stop? And he said, uh, yeah, no, I'll do more. And, and then he did, he did, you know, you're about to see some, some amazing uh, impersonations. Well, I guess they're not impersonations. He's the real deal, isn't he? Yeah, it's not like me going, damn it, Bobby. All right. Our, Butane our, is a bastard gas. <laughs> it, it, he said bastard. Yeah. <laughs> you know. and, and, and then we saw... Uh, well, Yeah, you're going to see it for yourself. It right is here. It is a... Uh, we, we, are, we now are hanging out with, and been a long-time listener, with... And by the way, we already knew this, but now it's official, because I was told by Rick Lincoln there, uh, this years ago yeah. that a lot of uh, some of the characters on King of the Hill... Right. Well, he talked, yeah, he talked about that VHS tape he has, and it's called The Three Dales. And you're on that tape from, from Access years ago. You know, he, that inspired see, King of the Hill. Who knows who you're inspiring out there right. as a viewer who has an Access show? Yeah. Who knows who you're inspiring? And there's an example right there. Uh, we were affecting things 17 years ago, I was, yeah. on shows like King of the Hill and not even knowing it. Exactly. We'd sit around and go, man, do you see that? That's kind of like what we were talking about. Well, he, he mentions this in the interview. He goes, and then they're going after corn. You know, it's, it's like one of Dale's like kind of taglines, but it's true. It's like now they are going after corn. It's, you know, GM corn is everywhere. And, you know, it, he's he's laying that that those eggs, those planting the seeds for people. I'm thinking, about, I'm thinking about insects and eggs right now, but... Uh, you know, he, he's planting those seeds in there, and people are like, ha ha, that's nothing. But then they realize, wait, wait, this is true, you know, because we're going to be showing the articles on all this stuff as he's talking about it. We're going to have stuff up there to really, like, expand this interview. It's a, but it's, it's a great interview. He's a really nice guy, really down to earth. And then we went and hung out with him after that. By the way, when you are an engineer working on uh, computer systems and propulsion systems on F-18s, that is like rocket science. It is. Yeah, he literally is a rocket scientist. The inventor of Beavis and Butthead is a rocket scientist. That's right. Well, <laughs> uh, uh, only that science. And we talk about Beavis and Butthead and crime rates. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is a deep interview <laughs> airing sometime next week. Right. But uh, here's a teaser. We'll be right back with the rest of Rob Dew, the insectivore. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants, fruits, vegetables, nuts, you name it. And the globalists have been going after gardening. They've been harassing people that have gardens in their front yards or their backyards. They've called for licenses for people to have gardens because you can't trust prisoners in the police state America to be able to grow their own food. That's why I've come to the realization that we need to become self-sufficient. You need to be informed. You need to have the Second Amendment to protect yourself. You need to be politically active to wake up others. You need to filter your water but you also need to plant a garden. Even if you live in an apartment, you can do this. If you live in the countryside, obviously you can do it on a grand scale. There are so many green belts in areas uh, that humans don't even visit, uh, nearby cities and in suburbs, where people are now more and more planting their own little private gardens and meadows and off the side of the road. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda, and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest of times. The ARC All-in-One Seed Kit contains 70 varieties of 50,000 seeds of fruits, vegetables, medicinal, and culinary herbs. All ARC seeds are heirloom. Each type is labeled and sealed separately for ease of use and longevity. The Deluxe Emergency Seed Bank combines three of Emergency Seed Bank's top sellers. The Family Survival Emergency Seed Bank, the Medicinal Herb Seeds Pack, and the Culinary Herb Seeds Pack. We also have starter varieties of the Deluxe Seed Packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, and medicinal herbs and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. A little seed can grow a huge tree that produces fruit for up to 50 years. We have the best life bombs. That's what these are. We have the best weapons against death out there at the lowest prices waiting for you to lovingly plant them and lovingly grow them and lovingly eat them and share them with others. We will strike back against the New World Order and this is only one more initiative in our fight against them. So please join us at InfoWarsShop.com or you can link through at InfoWars.com at the InfoWars Seed Center. Hello, this is Hank Hill, and I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Infoworth.com. Yeah. <laughs> Judge, what is the secret of the universe? <laughs> Infoworth.com. Yeah. <clears throat> Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. I'm still here. The grasshopper didn't uh, poison me or anything. And, and, you know, maybe I'll get used to it in the future if the UN says we have to eat bugs. But um, before we go to David Knight's interview, um, we're about to send one of our uh, new reporters. Go to the shot right here. This is uh, Gigi Ernetta. There she is. And uh, she's going to the premiere tonight of uh, into Star Trek Into the Darkness. Into the, dar into the Darkness. Into the Darkness. And we're going to try to find some intelligent life forms out there and ask them some serious questions and some funny questions. And because we're trying to broaden, I guess, the, uh, the people who see InfoWars and, and want to, you know, check out our stuff and then, and then kind of slip in our information in there to really make them think and wake, wake these people up. Absolutely. And I would say that that is absolutely logical. There you go. Absolutely logical. And uh, well, good luck on your uh, good luck on your your uh, journey. Live long and prosper. There you go. Live long and prosper. I, I said nanu nanu earlier, and I'm sure people are going to freak out about that. Trekkies. All right. Now we're going to go to an interview that uh, David Knight did yesterday with Dan Sullivan, and he's a filmmaker. He actually has an entry in the Paul Revere contest. It's got over fifty thousand views. Um, but he was working with a Tea Party group back in two thousand and ten. And the IRS started sending them all these forms like, who do you, you know, who, what groups do you work with? We want to see all your printed materials. Uh, who are your donors? Just asking them all this information that you know they're not asking Media Matters, and they are a nonprofit organization. They're 501c3. But they get a free pass because they are for the regime. They're for socialism. They're for calling everything a hate crime. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. It is the way we fund the Nightly News, the Alex Jones Show, sending reporters out to get stories, making documentaries. It's all from your support through the subscription, $5.95 a month. Uh, we have a 15-day free trial, and you can also share your username and password with up to 11 people. You can have 11 people at a time with one username and passcode watching the Nightly News, reading the books, checking out the movies, downloading all the reports we have, and putting them up on your YouTube channel. Spread this information out. That's why we have it there. And we do appreciate your support at PrisonPlanet.tv. Now, before we go to this interview with Dan Sullivan and David Knight, Dan Sullivan is an individual who's a filmmaker. He has a film in uh, the Paul Revere uh, contest. It's got about 50,000 views, too. Pretty impressive. And um, 
he worked with a Tea Party group back in 2010 who got one of these IRS attack dog notifications. That was only done by some rogue agents. It wasn't done, you know, nationwide as a directive from the White House. It was only done by a couple guys up in Ohio. Just remember that. That's what they tell you. So you got to remember that. That's part of the narrative. And uh, so before we go to that, we have a, a, a quick special report from Gigi Ernetta. And it's going to basically give you a lot of background into what's going on with this IRS scandal. And then we're going to go to the interview with David Knight and Dan Sullivan. Dan Sullivan's one of these victims speaking out against IRS tyranny. We go to that report now. I'm Gigi Ernetta with an InfoWars nightly news alert. The IRS has always had a bit of a reputation, but they have really outdone themselves lately. If you ever had to deal with them, you know that they tend to be bullies and they love to overstep boundaries. Well, not only have they recently targeted nonprofit groups that are Tea Party associated or patriots, but they've also gone after the people that are inside of the groups and their businesses, asking for a lot of information. In fact, some of these Tea Party groups have had to wait over two years to get correspondence from the IRS. And then when they do, they get these insane requests. Provide copies of your blog posts, all your newsletters, flyers, bulletins, and media, all your social networking information, including Facebook, all your meeting minutes. One organization, which was an educational group, handed out copies of the Constitution, among other books, and the IRS wanted them to write summaries of these books. Tom Zawatowski from the Portage County Tea Party stated they wanted us not only to give our members, but the federal ID number of every group that is part of our organization. Every American should be concerned about this agency's blatant abuse of power. Where are our rights to our privacy? This is way worse than what Nixon did. And believe me, there are people in power way up high in the echelons of the uh, government who know exactly what happened. And these bullies are the same bullies this IRS is going to be handling your health care. Stay on InfoWars.com for your latest information on the IRS scandal. And don't forget, go to PrisonPlanet.tv and you can share your username and password with up to 10 people. I'm Gigi Arnetta with an InfoWars nightly news alert. Well, after a report yesterday about the ongoing Obama scandal of using the IRS to go after political enemies, we were contacted by someone who actually received one of these audits and actually sent the document to us. And we're going to talk to him in just a second. But first, the question is, why are we allowing this kind of tax system to even exist? When you look at the kind of detailed questions that are being asked by the IRS, we see these things asked of us in our personal life. If we have a business, we're subjected to this kind of scrutiny. And fundamentally, the way the income tax system is set up, the way the IRS set is set up, it's not really as much about collecting revenue as it is about controlling you. When the government collects detailed information on you, on your business, on your organization, there's always a temptation for the government to use that in a nefarious way. And history has shown that they do use it to control and to attack other people. We see this uh, throughout administrations going all the way back to FDR. We see that they're going after enemies. And it doesn't matter if they're Democrat or Republican. And that's one of the reasons why the system is not changing. Because both the Democrats and the Republicans use it as a tool of power. And we have to demand that they stop asking these kinds of questions. So here with us now is Dan Sullivan. Dan, thank you for joining us. Uh, you. Now, you were involved in this organization. We're not going to name the organization because uh, you're not representing them at this moment, but you were involved with them back in 2010 or sometime around that point. It's the same time that all of this was happening with all the Tea Party organizations, and it was a Tea Party type liberty group that, that you were involved in. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. What, uh, when, when you got this, uh, this letter, how, how people reacted to that? Well, it was um, quite an intrusive um, letter asking quite a bit of detailed information um, about um, what was being applied for as a nonprofit organization, same as you know a lot of other organizations, um, um, centered around informing the public about what's going on, um, that type of thing from a liberty perspective, and um, 
Yeah, basically the IRS uh, decided to start um, targeting those type of organizations for in increased scrutiny. And, and uh, what I find interesting about this is that this happened after the Citizens United uh, bill uh, came through after the Supreme Court decision. And after that happened, which actually relaxed rules about participation in politics and that sort of thing, at that point, because we were seeing a surge in grassroots organizations, small organizations like yours. I mean, you're not you're not funded by the Koch brothers or anything, right? No. So, uh, you know, small grassroots organizations we saw springing up all over the place because some of the rules were relaxed, as I believe they should have been. And right. uh, in response to that, the Obama administration and the Democrat Party perceived this surge in new grassroots groups as being. Uh, in opposition largely to them and so they started focusing on those groups and focusing on the very groups that would be opposed to them groups that are talking about taxes about spending about uh, deficits groups that are talking about the constitution and the bill of rights even groups that are talking about uh, making america a better place those are phrases that the IRS was searching for in terms of trying to find these groups and then they sent them these detailed audits like the one that you sent us today. Well in their detailed audits not you know I don't think many people oppose an audit just to make sure you're following the law but this is intrusive there they ask mm -hmm. questions about they want your membership lists who's involved what are they going to talk about um, who pays you know what uh, in a free society where the freedom of speech is honored um, a gov a, an intrusive government, this IRS agency that's clearly out of control, would not be acting as if they are uh, Soviet Union uh, type investigators, show me your papers, I want to know everything that you're doing. Right, because what you're looking at with, uh, from the IRS standpoint, they're looking at making a determination. And there's a, if you contribute directly to a politician's political campaign, then people cannot uh, deduct those contributions from their taxes. Correct. But if you're if you're contributing to another kind of 501 corporation that in this case not, 501c4, yeah, right, that does not give money directly to political campaigns, but basically advocates for issues or tries to educate the public, that sort of thing. Those tax deductions are deductible. So there is a limit under those kinds of rules. And and again, I guess it's a question of whether or not we want to have a tax system that even needs to know those types of things, because obviously taxes could just be collected anonymously if we had some kind of a sales tax system or many other types of systems have been proposed that would be anonymous that the uh, government would not have to have that kind of information from people but they went far Correct. beyond far beyond the exactly. idea that, of that's where i was going to go with that is that not only do they go far beyond um just money issues which i don't know that i necessarily have a pr too big of a problem with um they ask questions such as how does your organization find members uh, right, what right. are the questions you ask potential members i mean what does that matter let's we'll talk about some meetings let's talk about that because we've got yeah. a I, I looked at this and it's a little over 30 questions that they asked and and it's not just the number of questions but some of these questions would require a great deal of work and expense to give these answers to them and as you pointed out they're extremely intrusive and let me just run down some of these questions here number one does your organization promote or publicize itself using any internet social media such as Facebook if so list all the social media outlets <laughs> right. then another one here uh, we don't want to you to merely describe the purpose of your organization rather describe the activities your organization will initiate and or participate in to fulfill its purpose and they want to know what does the activity entail? Who conducts it? Where is it going to be conducted? When is it going to be right. conducted? Then you go down and you talk about membership. It says, how does your organization solicit members? How does you, imagine if this is a church, for example, because right. churches are protected under the First Amendment, just like free speech is, just like political well, speech is. Yeah, exactly. And this is political speech. Of all things, this is what the First Amendment was set up to do, was to protect political speech and so they want to know how your organization solicits members right. is there a church or any organization especially a political organization that should be asked these types of questions what are the questions asked of potential members what are the selection criteria for approving people then it talks about the events that you're going to hold it says uh, for all of the public events conducted or planned they want to know the time the location the content schedule of each event they want to yeah, identify why you think they might want to know that yeah. I'm left to infer I can't you know take many guesses other than do they want to shut it down in the future do they right. want to 
Um, you know, what, are, what do they plan on doing with that information and how does that even pertain to ascertaining whether or not an organization uh, should be eligible for 501 status? Absolutely. There's a, as you mentioned, you know, according to the, I would say, screwed up system that we've got from a monetary standpoint and from that simple rule as to are you giving money to uh, politicians for their political campaigns or not? That's really the central issue. And then they're going into all of this detailed information. And here's the other thing about the way the income tax and the IRS operates. You're always guilty and you have to prove your innocence. You Until always you have to. Innocent. That's correct. That's right. You always have yeah, to provide these, the information these up front. letters didn't just go out to the organization that I participated in, but given recent news and uh, information that's come to light, they've gone out to many. That's right. And you, connect, you contacted a senator there, didn't you, uh, in your area? I've contacted uh, both, uh, both of Ohio's senators, Senators Portman and Brown. Um, senator Portman seemed a little more interested in pursuing it than Senator Brown, but I really, up in, I mean, this was a year ago that these letters came out or more, um, and really now we're just kind of seeing it in the news. Right. Um, how effective is either senator at really... Right. Uh, now we did have, we know that there was uh, some pushback because a lot of organizations were getting this and I think some of them contacted their uh, representatives as you did and I think uh, they started to see a pattern developing here and they called the IRS commissioner as well as many senior officials in the IRS before Congress and asked them, are you doing this? And, and they, they said at the time they denied, denied it. it. Exactly. Five times they lied about this and you had a group of ten Republican uh, senators who, uh, and I'm not sure if it's any of the senators there in Ohio that you referred to, but they sent a letter to the IRS telling them not to do what they believed the IRS was doing, even though the IRS was lying about this. And listen to what Chuck Schumer said. He sent a reply to the Republican senators who gave the letter to the IRS telling them to cease and desist these practices that they believed were going on in spite of IRS denials. And Schumer said that the Republican letter to the IRS was an unsubtle threat, clearly designed to put a chilling effect on the agency's enforcement. I, I mean, he's defending the poor IRS. He doesn't want the IRS to be, uh, have a chilling effect put on them. He doesn't want them to be intimidated. And yet, that's precisely what the IRS was doing to organizations that, like the one you're to involved. believe that these people represent the people, the common man, Main Street, as it were. Yes, absolutely. I mean, going down and looking at some of this other stuff, they, for some of these events, they want you to identify and provide copies of handouts that are going to be given to the audience, to identify workshop materials that instructors will use, the names and the credentials of the instructors. Uh, they want to know if you've contacted, uh, invited any candidates to participate with anything. Uh, if so, which ones are going to show up? Uh, they want to know all copies they want all copies of all handouts provided and distributed at forums. Uh, they want copies of all right. communications, pamphlets, advertisements, other materials. Absolutely amazing that right. they've gone with this kind of detail. I mean, you talk about something that is an unsubtle threat. That's precisely yeah, I think the what unsubtle this is. threat comes from the government that oversteps their constitutional bounds. Mm -hmm. Now, the, this article, we're not going to name the organization that you're involved in, but we are going to name the person who signed this at the bottom on behalf of the IRS. I don't know what his title is. You said you believe he's a supervisor. His name is Joseph R. Hare. That's H-E-R-R. -R, and yes. he operates out of the Cincinnati, Ohio IRS office. Uh, looks like he specializes in exempt organizations. So, yeah, uh, if you look at his LinkedIn profile, um, it lists him in, in a supervisory role. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Beyond that, uh, there's not much information about who this Joseph Herr is, and um, I don't know that I necessarily want to accuse this that person of originating all right. of this. Right. But that person needs to be put in front of Congress to answer to wh who told him to do this. Exactly. And we also mentioned his name not only uh, so that uh, anybody who's investigating this developing scandal can get more information from him, but we also want people to know that this isn't something we just made up. Uh, this is a legitimate, uh, this is the actual letter that was uh, sent to people who had filed a 1024 form, and uh, this is follow-up questions that went way, way beyond what anybody in a free country should be required to ask, especially when we have a First Amendment designed to protect political speech. 
and you can just flip all these questions over any organization that you're involved in. Uh, and if they can do this to a church that's in, in to a uh, organization that's involved in political activities, they can do this at any time they want to to a church or to any other organization. Well, thank you for sending this to us. Uh, now, there's something else I wanted to talk to you about. I know that you're, uh, you've submitted an entry into the Operation Paul Revere contest. Sure and uh, it's an uh, it's interesting, uh, interesting submission. You've gotten about 51,000 views on it so far. Yes, and it's a trailer for a series that you're planning on doing. It's called Article 17. We're showing a little bit of it here on the screen now. Tell us a little bit about uh, this series that you've got envisioned. Um, yeah, basically, Article 17 is a story that um, I wrote over the past six years. Um, and basically what happened is uh, people said, that's great, you wrote a story, who's going to read it, and how is it going to impact society, and what are you going to do with it? And I said, well, why don't we produce it as a film? Uh, not too many people read anymore, unfortunately. Absolutely. Um, and then this uh, Paul Revere project came up and we said, well, why not? And what better audience than freedom-loving uh, types of people at InfoWars? That's a great audience to put forth such an important message such as Article 17. And Article 17, basically, to give you a quick rundown, it's um, a fictional future America where society has deteriorated and has sidestepped away from freedoms. Um, and basically what happens is, is they use a bunch of false flag attacks, the government, the uh, illegal, um, um, tyrannical government that is, uh, puts in place a number of uh, um, covert activities designed to instill fear in the minds of the people so that they welcome and they take in uh, this uh, empty promise of security in exchange for their freedoms. Right, and you name it after Article 17 from one of the executive article, uh, articles that Obama proposed for yes. uh, executive now, we orders. We reworded it a little bit so as not to be directly pointing at uh, the current President Obama because this is a far-reaching problem, much mm -hmm. further. Uh, it goes much further back than I, be I believe than President Obama. It, you know, I, I think it transcends both parties in a lot mm -hmm. of aspects. Um, Absolutely. Basically what it is is um, Article 17 in the storyline that I wrote um, is part of an executive order that mandates that the, anyone that um, legally or lawfully has any firearms or dangerous weapons must undergo um, an extensive battery of mental health evaluations. Um, and, and what happens in the storyline is they blanket, you know, determine that everybody's crazy. Exactly. And, and it's not the premise that you've got here is that if anyone has a uh, firearm, they have to submit to psychological tests to right. prove that they're sane. Yeah, and, and it's, essence, it's, in it's essence, the exact backwards way of, you know, not, not innocent until proven guilty. You are considered to be insane until you can prove yourself fit. Exactly. But it, it, it ties in exactly what we're talking about, which is the IRS. Right. Everything there you have to prove prior to engaging in any activity or, or you know, b before you can get a deduction or whatever, you have to prove that you're innocent, that you qualify. So just as the IRS code removes the presumption of innocence, removes our Fourth Amendment uh, protections, right. uh, this would do that in the, same th in the same way. And we see a lot of organizations that are jumping, even conservatives, right after this uh, Sandy Hook shooting. I was hearing conservative talk show hosts all over the place saying, we really need to get the guns out of convicted criminals' hands and out of people who are judged to be insane. And we see the same thing from right. our police chief here in Austin, Art Acevedo, saying, we've got to get it out of the hands of convicted criminals, fine. But we, then he adds, and anybody that might be psychologically dangerous. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, now we're removing the, due process from the... the I story. cringe at the term, might be. Yeah, exactly. Anytime someone uses those types of words, because that means, well, you could someday go off the deep end. Well, I also could leave the atmosphere and travel to the moon. Some, you know, humans presumably have done that. Well, that doesn't mean I will. But it also yeah. takes away our due process. In other words, uh, you know, convicted criminal is somebody who's been convicted of doing something by crime. He's presumably had due process. He's had a jury trial. He's had a defense advocate uh, arguing for him. But in these cases, and if you just say that a psychiatrist can basically write somebody up and then they lose their ability to have firearms and anybody in right. their home loses their ability to have firearms. Now you've got that determination made by one person. There is no review. There is no trial. There is no jury. There is no defense attorney. And you can basically take away the firearms of anybody. You can make anybody look insane yep. if you've just got one person's opinion there. 
Well, and if you have a nationalized system uh, of medical, such as under Obamacare, and then you tie that in with um, this type of thing, where a doctor, you know, can just insert into your background check that they think that, you know, you displayed um, a little bit of, you know, they were suspicious that you might be upset about something or you had a breakup with your spouse or, you know, whatever. This person could be unstable. Well, right. next time you go, you might not find out about it until you go to lawfully buy a firearm, putting, you know, your background check information forward like an honest citizen, and then you find out that, you know, after the fact, without, like you said, due process, that this is going to happen to you. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Dan. I appreciate you, you. Uh, giving us that information and being on the uh, being politically active and even trying to do something to uh, help the cause of liberty. Also, appreciate you getting involved in the Paul Revere contest. Uh, looks like a great yeah. series that you're working on, and you're getting a lot of uh, views. You've got over 51,000 views right now on there. So, uh, good luck with that. Thank you very much. Thank you for participating, and thanks for giving us the information. All right, not a problem. Bye-bye. Well, a great job from Dan on his Paul Revere entry. As we've said, you are Paul Revere. You are also the eyes and ears of the vigilance that's required for liberty. And just as we saw with his activism in Ohio, getting involved with that, uh, a group that's promoting liberty and limited government and being aware of what's going on. And when the government does things that are wrong, when they persecute people who are trying to organize at a grassroots level to try to get back liberty, get back freedom, get back to the Constitution, then it's time for people to speak out and say that what their government is doing is wrong. So I appreciate Dan doing both of those things. And if you'd like to help to share the information with people, you can go to Prison Planet TV and become a subscriber if you're watching this on YouTube. One subscription will allow you to share that with 10 people simultaneously. It helps to provide for the cost of the bandwidth and the operations that we provide here. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern.